what's good everyone it's the kid mikey t the movie star i appreciate y'all for tuning in today let's handle the business first everybody head over to instagram follow me on the gram mikey t underscore the movie star everybody who follows me back i'm gonna follow y'all back that's what's going on here you know we keep uh, we keep in tune with our supporters so we're gonna get back into the social media of the trial as I said in the first piece, there was over 100 social media posts used in this trial. There was four to five music videos used in this trial. Uh, but now we're going to dig right back into it. So social media videos. The court, uh, the court's October 16, 2019 order noted that any objection to the government's written transcript of the lyrics must be submitted to, by defense counsel, no later than October 29th, 2019. The court noted in the order that if there are disputes, the court will rule on the objections or may submit the transcripts to the jury, as the Third Circuit has specifically held that at least in connection with the telephone wiretape conversations, the oral conversation is the original evidence, and the transcripts, usually prepared by the government, may be considered by a jury as an aid to understanding the verbal conversation. So uh, this is affirming admission of transcripts of record conversations because the transcripts were a useful aid to the jurors. The same rule applies to lyrics and videos of rap music. So they're using uh, videos, they're using uh, posts, they're using any type of freestyles that these OBH artists put out, just like they're using the wiretaps. They're putting it in the same frame. A wiretap, a conversation, somebody talking about drugs, they're putting it in the same frame, the same category as somebody writing about selling ounces of blow or whatever on a song. It just doesn't add up because what you do in a movie, you don't do in real life. So two, social media posts. During the evidentiary hearing and reiterated in October 16th, 2019 order, the court indicated that it would not admit into evidence Instagram posts or other photographs of defendants merely wearing certain clothing which the government claimed showed anti-prosecution bias, such as adverse references to people who may be termed snitches. Also, the court stated it would not allow photographs of individual defendants unless there was some evidence lying, uh, tying the post of uh, narcotics, transactions, and supporting the relevance to the alleged conspiracy. The government asserts that some of the photographs of individual defendants will be evidence that they were at a specific location and other evidence which the court may term evidence alundi will show that there were drugs at the location on the date. The photograph was taken the possession, which was part of the conspiracy in conduct and furtherance of the conspiracy. The court acknowledged that with such evidence, the photographs may be admissible. And this goes back to Dark Lowe going to the trial when he was wearing an OVH shirt. He had been to the trial for three days straight. And uh, he came with an OBH shirt, and when it was time for Taz to testify, he pointed Dark Low out. He said, that guy's making me feel a little bit uncomfortable. Which doesn't make sense to me, because Taz had never given up any information on Dark Low prior to this. As a lot of people are saying, Taz didn't give up Dark Low. So why did he point out Dark Low when he was there? So the court stated that before showing any social media posts to the jury, the government would need to establish the existence of the conspiracy and demonstrate that it had introduced or uh, would offer sufficient evidence showing the defendant depicted in the social media exhibit to be a part of the conspiracy and have acted in furtherance of the conspiracy. All right, so this is the discussion. The federal rules of evidence call for admission of relevant evidence unless the evidence is subject to exclusion by another source. The Constitution, a federal statute, another rule in the federal rules, or a Supreme Court rule relevant to the government's motion is possible exclusion under the FRE 404. And the distinction between intrinsic and extrinsic evidence and the balance of prohibitive value of evidence against potential prejudicial effect. In support of its motion, the government contends that the social media posts are intrinsic 
because they directly prove the charged offenses. But even if they are not intrinsic, the social media evidence is admissible under FRE at 404. The defendants contend that the prejudicial effect of the social media evidence far outweighs any prohibitive value the social media videos and posts may have, and therefore FRE 403 requires exclusion. The court will set forth the, applic the applicable standards of the law and relevant precedents dealing with the admissibility of similar evidence, and then outline the procedures that will govern the admissibility of the social media evidence at trial. A. Intrinsic and Extrinsic uh, Evidence Evidence of uncharged misconduct is admissible only if it is either intrinsic to the crime charged or extrinsic and satisfies the Third Circuit has defined intrinsic evidence narrowly explaining that evidence is intrinsic and admissible if the evidence directly proves the charge offense or B, the uncharged act committed contemporaneously with the charged crime, facilitated the commission of the charged crime. So this goes back to the United States first green. Evidence that does not fall into either of the two intrinsic evidence categorizes is analyzed as extrinsic under FRE. However, Green cautioned that there is little practical import to the intrinsic distinction. Rather, the primary significance is the guarantee of procedural pr uh, protections to evidence under FRE 404. Here, the government contends the social media evidence is intrinsic because it directly proves the charged crime, a conspiracy to obtain and distribute quantities of various controlled substances. The government argues and the spreadsheet and the transcripts arguably support the concept. The, that some of the photographs, documents, defendants' engagements in narcotic trafficking at various locations, that videos show defendants' West communication of threats and violence, according to the government, the DTO utilized social media and West rap music videos to protect and maintain their drug trafficking activities and prevent witnesses from cooperating with law enforcement. The second superseding indictment, the social media evidence may corroborate the existence of the DTO, link some defendants who participated in creating and posting the content to the conspiracy, the, and establish the means by which the DTO proceed, uh, protected its territory. Because the social media evidence is part and parcel of the charged offense, it may be admissible as intrinsic evidence. Green. The balance of prohibitive value under and against unfair prejudice. Otherwise admissible evidence is subject to exclusion based on the unfair prejudice standard set forth, which permits a court to exclude relevant evidence if its prohibitive value is substantially outweighed by a danger of unfair prejudice, confusing the issues, misleading the jury, undue delay, wasting time, or needlessly presenting uh, evidence. Defendants contend that because the videos are extremely disturbing in their portrayal of the crime and violence, they implicate unfair prejudice and require exclusion under FRE 403 ECF 394 Hoover's uh, to the government to admit social media. The government argues that a person who knows how to make a post on social media that is publicly viewable must also know that in addition to friends, family, and colleagues, strangers, including prosecutors and law enforcement, can access the videos and posts that, uh, and that there is no unfairness in using defendants' own social media posts against them. In analyzing the admissibility, the court must observe tolerance for cultural and artistic expressions different from an individual judge's or individual juror's background and taste. The court notes that the same conclusion, finding the social media evidence admissible subject, uh, follows if the evidence is analyzed under the test set forth for extrinsic prior bad act evidence. The analysts under, uh, it involves four steps. One, the evidence must be offered for a proper purpose. Uh, two, the evidence must satisfy the relevancy requirement. Uh, three, the prohibitive value of similar acts evidence must substantially outweighed by its potential for unfair prejudice. Four, the trial court must consider instructing the jury that the similar acts evidence is to be considered only for proper purpose for which it was admitted. All four 
Huddleston elements may be satisfied because one, the social media evidence is offered for a proper purpose, knowledge. Two, the evidence is relevant as it uh, tends to support the existence of the alleged conspiracy. Three, the evidence satisfies as discussed. Four, the court will consider giving a limit a instruction to the jury at trial. Therefore, even if the social media evidence is not interesting, it nonetheless may be admissible. Nonetheless, judicial standards of admissibility of prohibitive evidence will apply, but must be balanced against the potential prejudice. So it looked like Ab and the rest of the guys were looking to get a lot of these videos dismissed based on the fact that when you go to shoot a music video, you're really looking to shoot uh, some some stuff that you'd see in a movie, some stuff that you really wouldn't do in your natural life. When you go and you use uh, prop guns and uh, prop drugs for videos, when you've got uh, mad amounts of drugs that a normal person really wouldn't have, say pounds of marijuana or kilos, and you use that in a video as a prop, these are the type of things that uh, ARAB and OBH wanted to have suppressed. So one, the value of social media evidence. The value of the evidence in question may be substantial. The social media videos and posts arguably corroborate the existence of a conspiracy to distribute controlled substances, identify and expose the relationship amongst various members of the DTO, and demonstrate one of the ways that the organization executed control. For example, West reference to OBH, OBH Goonie Gang, OBH Mob, and or OBH Mafia in video 2, video 3, and video 4, are because the government alleges that OBH is the name the DTO operated under. Um, so finding rap lyrics because by referring to the lyrics provided as evidence with the continued identification as a member of the enterprise. As regards the social media videos, there is an important dis uh, distinction to be drawn between the portrayal of violence in opera and music lyrics and the violence portrayed in rap videos in this case. The violence in operas portrays past evidence. For example, Turnitot takes place in medieval China. Uh, das Renegold is set in an unknown prehistoric era, and Salome takes place in biblical times. However, in this case, the lyrics of rap, specifically rap used by the defendant West, are describing contemporary events. Indeed, Dr. Cooper's testimony corroborated that the rap lyrics are an expression of life in big cities in the 21st century. For this reason alone, the lyrics of the rap videos by defendant West may have value. As an example of the test, uh, as an example of the type of analysts the court will apply, assume a hypothetical as follows. In the middle of Philadelphia City Hall courtyard, Mr. A states to a crowd of pedestrians that I am agreeing with Mr. B that he will murder Mr. C as soon as possible. Further assume that Mr. B does in fact murder Mr. C within the next two days. Surely this evidence would give the police justification to arrest Mr. A and Mr. B, charge Mr. B with murder, and charge both with conspiracy. Mr. C, additionally, Mr. A's statement would be admissible against Mr. A at Mr. A's trial. The evidence would likely be sufficient to convict Mr. A of conspiracy even though he did not himself murder Mr. C. So that's basically a breakdown of how the government is looking at this whole situation with Arab, Taz, Robbie Johnson. All of that is how they're looking at it, and they're drawing it up with Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C. If Mr. A tells Mr. B to kill Mr. C, then Mr. B is going to be charged with murder, and Mr. A is going to be charged with conspiracy to commit murder. Application of this principle indicates that the social media videos featuring the defendant West may be admissible if the government presents evidence demonstrating the truthfulness of the statements in the videos. Such a ruling would not do any disrespect to African American culture or the opinions of Dr. Cooper. Simply put, the individuals cannot immunize themselves from the criminal liability by expressing their intent in a rap video when the same speech would not be protected if spoken in the middle of City Hall Courtyard. Two, balance uh, the values. So the next, part of, uh, the next part of this goes into the evidence with value is not automatically admissible. Uh, it requires a balancing of danger of unfair prejudice implicated by admission against the value of the evidence. Unfair prejudice requires that the evidence have an undue tendency to suggest decision. 
on an improper basis, commonly, though not necessarily, an emotional one. Uh, in the United States versus Cross, uh, in conducting FRE 403, balancing of value against unfair prejudice, a district court has broad discretion. Uh, as discussed, supra, the, probi the probative value of the social media evidence here may be significant, but it, but it substantiates the existence of drug trafficking conspiracies and depicts various de uh, defendants engaged in activities that purposely furthered the mission of the DTO. This probative value must be balanced against the potential for unfair prejudice based on the references to violence and drug dealing, extensive profanity, and images of defendants brandishing firearms contained in social media evidence. Defendants argue the introduction of the social media videos featuring gangster rap, a new type of cultural expression popular in the African American community, would be unduly prejudicial. The question presented by the government motions whether the FRE permits admission of rap music and lyrics in the criminal prosecution has been confronted by one court in the district in the United States versus Bay. Judge uh, Beetlestone concluded that there were evidence had no relation of any kind to the charge offense and has high potential to create unfair prejudice. Interesting right there. So in another case, they, they uh, basically admitted that some lyrics would create an unfair prejudice. The government sought to admit rap videos performed by the defendant in his prosecution for violating a felon in possession statute. Although the court determined that the rap evidence was not admissible, it nonetheless analyzed the applicability after finding that the probative value of the evidence was minimal since the music video had no bearing whatsoever as to the crime charge, that is. Whether Bay possessed a firearm and that the potentially inflammatory nature of the uh, evidence was high, given the offensive lyrics contained in the videos, Bay held that the proper balance under FRE 403 required exclusion of the rap video. Bay, unlike Bay, excuse me, unlike Bay, where the admissibility of the rap lyrics was considered in the context of a distinct crime, a felon in possession of a firearm, and thus had minimal relevance. Here, the social media videos relate directly to the charged offenses, insofar as they tend to identify the members of the DTO, demonstrate activities of various defendants, and document one way in which the DTO maintained control. Uh, moreover, the potentially inflammatory nature of the evidence in the in Bay was significant, given the disconnect between the single crime charge and the offensiveness of the lyrics. By contrast, while the social media evidence here contains profanity and references, violence, and some viewers may find offensive or uh, uh, or shocking, the inflammatory nature of the evidence is no more inflammatory than the charged crimes. Conspiracy, distribute narcotics, distribution of controlled substances, weapons possession, and other criminal activity. Therefore, Bay does not undermine the court's conclusion that the social media evidence will be admitted if a proper foundation is laid at trial. Numerous courts have recognized that the probative value of rap lyrics documented in promoting drug trafficking activity may tilt the balance in favor of inclusion. In the United States vs. Mills, for example, a RICO defendant allegedly involved in various gang-related activities sought to preclude the government from introducing rap lyrics and videos featuring a co-defendant, but the court concluded that permitted admission of the evidence, the probative nature of the rap music videos and mills stemmed from the fact that they tended to establish the existence of the criminal enterprise, racketeering activities purposely committed by members of the enterprise and alleged purposes of enterprise. This probative value was not substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice because there was nothing inflammatory as to prompt a jury to decide the case on improper basis. Also, United States versus Pierce, uh, affirming admission of defendant's rap video because the lyrics demonstrated animosity towards a feuding organization and supported his association with violent street gang. United States vs. Moore, uh, holding that the rap lyrics were properly admitted because they were used to show defendant's participation in drug distribution com uh, conspiracy. Mills is closely analog and supports the court's conclusion that the social media evidence in the question is admissible. As in Mills, here, multiple defendants are alleged to be involved in narcotics trafficking and are seeking the exclusion of rap lyrics. 
on grounds, just as Mills concluded that the wide recognition of rap uh, lyrics made it highly unlikely that any reasonable juror nowadays would conclude that the defendants are guilty merely because of rap songs contain potentially offensive themes. Here, the probative value of the evidence is not substantially outweighed by the potential for unfair prejudice, just because the videos and posts contain vulgar, inflammatory language. The defendants caution that the circuit courts have admonished trial judges against admitting rap videos or lyrics with merely a tenuous connection to defendant or issues in the case. Uh, however, the government in this case of States v. Heron uh, may establish much more than the tenuous connection the decision cited in Heron found objectionable. First, the speaker in all three videos is Defendant West, alleged to be the leader of the DTO, this distinguishes the instant case from the United States vs. Gambry, where the rap video that was erroneously admitted featured a non-defendant. See also the United States vs. Williams, number 13-764-2017-WL4310712 at 6, uh, where he admitted uh, the music video rap by the defendant, but excluding rap videos of non-conspirators. Moreover, in Gamory, the balance under FRE 403 favored exclusions, but for the reasons discussed, the balance weighs in favor of the uh, inclusion here. Finally, numerous courts have admitted rap music videos in criminal charges uh, in criminal trials where the content of the lyrics or video was related to the issue in the case. So right here, they just went over several cases where uh, they said Arab, it's different in Arab's case, because he is the one speaking on the records and he's the one being charged. In other cases, I guess you had, say, you get a, an artist who reaches out to somebody who is a known criminal to speak on his album. In that case, you have some, uh, a non-defendant speaking on it, some uh, a non-conspirator speaking on it, not just yourself. But a lot of the times uh, you see that some of the lyrics were used in diss records when they would say there would be an, uh, a court case between two different factions. Maybe when the government brings charges against a hip-hop artist for attacking another person. Uh, all types of stuff like that issued in here. Like we saw earlier, you had a, a lawyer try to flush drugs. You had a lawyer try to go in and offer money. They're bringing up a lot of past cases in this to get, you know, to drive that final nail into ARAB because they really want to use the music and the videos in this trial. In sum, exclusion is only warranted under if the danger of unfair prejudice, not just prejudice, substantially outweighs probative value. The United States versus Starnes here, where the defendant dis, uh, disseminated the social media evidence on publicly viewable sites. Indeed, the purpose of social networking sites such as Instagram and YouTube is to allow others to view posted content. It cannot be said that the admitting evidence of those posts in the subsequent prosecution creates unfair prejudice within the meaning of FRE 403. Procedures of admission of uh, social media evidence at trial. Although the court concludes that the social media evidence is admissible if accomplished by the facts discussed above, if accompanied by the facts discussed above, the following procedures will be followed to ensure that no defendant is subjected to unfair prejudice. Measures to lessen any prejudice may include a general charge about the admissibility, the social media videos, and the social media posts. Defense counsel are invited to submit such a proposed charge to be given at the time proposed evidence is presented. Also, the government must limit the amount of time in seconds that the Instagram posts or other photos will be portrayed to the jury. The court will require the government to edit the social media videos to the portions that are arguably relevant to the probative of the counts in the second superseding indictment. The court notes the defendants have not raised any objection to the admission of social media evidence based on authentication. So in conclusion, for the foregoing reasons, the government's motion to admit social media posts is granted in part and denied in part, and the court will rule specific posts as appropriate. Wow. So in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, the United States first Abdul West, the criminal action number 18-249, order in the motion to admit social media posts, and now this 22nd day of October uh, 2019, for the reasons stated in the foregoing memorandum, it is hereby ordered 
that the motion to admit social media posts is granted in part and denied in part, and the court will rule on specific posts as appropriate. It is further ordered that the motions uh, for the joinder and the response of Hoover to the government's motions of Boyer, Gadsden, Hickson, Blanding, West, and Baker are granted. All right, well, that does that as far as the social media postings go. That got really intricate as far as bringing in the hip-hop expert, as far as mentioning all the uh, the past music. Now I just want to let everybody know the full story of what happened. I've got a 30-page document, and I've got a 48-page document. I know a lot of people aren't going in and reading this stuff word by word. I hope you all can use this and take from this to see what is being, what was admitted into this trial, what wasn't admitted into this trial. Everybody, do me a favor. Follow me on Instagram, Mikey T underscore the movie star. I'm going to follow everybody back who follows me based on this video. I appreciate y'all. I respect y'all. Salute.